All right, so what part of this in particular do you want me to render out? Are you wanting this dark and middle tone, or are you wanting to see you know, some of the face of this texture as well? Like as far as like the, the shape of the front edge and whatnot, the hardest part. Well, to me, I don't know what the hardest part would be <laughs> at this point. Uh, let's see what we got here. So if I can just find an interesting area. Some of this is out of focus. Let me just try to capture this. No, I'm just taking this into Photoshop. You're going to be doing this uh, traditionally on graphite and paper. I'm just taking this into Photoshop so I can uh, get a good reference. And then I'm actually going to save this out to my desktop as a JPEG and open it up. And preview. So I can uh, it won't be using as much RAM. Then from here, you guys let me know if you can see my screen. I'm guessing you can see this here, the sketch pad and everything. Okay. I'm going to adjust this so I can show the reference as well. So these are the tools I'm going to be using, mostly a 2B pencil, 4B pencil, blending stick. Um, sorry, I guess you guys could see that. A blending stick here. I strongly encourage you breaking this out and experimenting with it. I use, well, this one's been used for blending um, color pencil. So there's a little bit of red in it, but I think I've got most of that, most of that out. But I try to keep one end for really tight details. So like if I need to get into a certain area, I'm pushing up to this, the graphite back into this edge here, I will use, I need that sharp point in order to blend that really clean edge. Um, then the other side, I don't know if you can see that it's a little bit more frayed. You can't see any of that nonsense. Um, it's a little more frayed and that's because I'm usually doing larger areas sometimes on a side like this and it starts that heavier pressure and faster movement will tend to um, fray the tip a bit more. So if you keep, you know, one side for heavy stuff and bulk areas and the other side for details, um, you'll see that it's going to last you a lot longer. This eraser for those uh, control Z undoes and then um, I have a cut area that has some sharp points on it that allows me to get in and erase and pull out little, you know, uh, little highlights in certain areas. Like if I wanted to pull out some spotted areas, I would just kind of dab that corner and you'll start to see that some of that value is going to be lifted. Uh, so sharp edges on erasers are really nice to have around. So from here, if I'm going to be drawing this guy over here, I'm going to obviously break out um, my thumbnail, get that square down on my paper. Notice how I'm using the residual uh, graphite that's on the blending stick to rough out my composition, the, the, the picture plane. There's really no point in breaking out a pencil for that for something that's going to be really light in value. 
that's something else uh, whenever I'm breaking out uh, or starting the shape and proportion, a lot of times I will just use my blending sticks. So I can't remember if it was Caitlin or uh, Charlene that was uh, mentioning that they're heavy handed. You might want to get some graphite on your tortillion blender and then use this method here where you're just using some really faint kind of ghost lines to rough out those um, shape and proportion, those critical areas. That way you don't end up with harsh lines. That's too not far enough. So this needs to be about here. That's too high. Okay, I think I have enough to, to start off with. And so now I'm just gonna jump into my 2B pencil. Hopefully I don't block what I'm doing too much. I don't have a whole lot of real estate here um, on my desk from this angle. All right. What I like to do is start with the darker values. So I look at those heavy areas that are gonna be pretty much black. And I start working those in first. So this is pretty much the area I'm going for, some shape like this. I'm define that a little bit better. I'm just gonna be really loose with applying that graphite. I'm not using heavy pressure. I'm just gonna gradually build up these values. Um, if you go on, you go a little too heavy too early on, you may find that you can't erase as well if you have to actually erase. Um, so it's best to just kind of do it even passes with that same pressure that you started with uh, for that pass and just fill in. Try to get a nice even coat. Sometimes it helps, uh, especially when you're getting uh, on a paper that's really loose fibers, like sketchbook paper. If you switch directions, just change the angle and start shading the opposite direction. You'll see it starts to fill in a little bit more because you're, you're hitting the paper at a different angle. So it's starting to fill in all of those fibers. Um, so you're kind of creating this woven texture with your graphite. You keep changing directions it'll just kind of it'll keep filling in <clears throat> from here I would break out my blending stick I'm looking at which end is a little more frayed and I'm gonna start just pushing that graphite around one reason why I start with the darker values is because it helps me to better gauge the rest of the values in my composition. It's kind of setting the, uh, the stage, I guess you would say, for the rest of the value. Uh, the, the other reason is because it allows me to build up some more graphite onto my blending stick, which I will then go in and play around with my midtones with that residual graphite. So from here, I'm going to, let's see, I need, I have that top edge in here, do I? Thickness of this guy, from here to here. Back edge of this guy, something like this. Right now, I'm just looking at all of these other little details. So like where the, <clears throat> the contour start for each of these blocks of wood that are you know, going back in this kind of linear direction. So I'm looking at those dividing spaces, those, those sh other shadows that are defining those contours. I'm just gonna kind of block those in. Notice again, you can see, yep, you see that line there came on pretty heavily because I have all this graphite. Uh, on the tortillion blender. 
Uh, from here, I'm going to think about just looking. Okay, well, this line's going back into space this way. Hopefully, at this point, you already had this stuff mapped out. Um, I don't because I didn't do this ahead of time, right? But hopefully, you guys have already kind of planned out all of this information with your week two activity. This line here is pretty much dead straight. It's tucked in. It's a little closer to the contour of where or the outer edge of my picture plane. It's a little bit further away up top, but not much. That's, I think because this is going this way and then this is going back that way. So we'll give that a bit more of an angle inward. And that should be close enough as far as shape and proportion goes, at least for this study. So you can see that. So now I have a pretty good baseline to start with. I see some questions or some comments. I'm just going to check those real quick. It's a good idea, Caitlin. Um, so yeah, it, it does help to kind of work along. Uh, just play around with the tools like she's suggesting that that's always uh, going to help. I'm not, uh, this isn't a four by four. This is about, you know, I have a ruler here. This is only about a two by two. Yeah, exactly two inches by exactly two inches. So now from, from here, I'm looking at the rest of my midtones, right? Um, I don't know which way I want to start. I can either start back to front, front to back. Actually, I'm going to keep working in my uh, all of these other dark textures that I'm seeing over here, these little um, odd-shaped formations. Uh, so this one seems to be, if I can work at an angle here. <clears throat> I guess I can work in this guy as well. So there's another band here. I'm just gonna kind of push this and make it a little bit darker. So I know that that should be kind of dark as well. And then from here, I'm just gonna work in this other shape. And you don't have to get those values perfect, you know, uh, right away or the shape. Just kind of let your uh, gut, have a gut reaction to it and lay it down and that's what's great about using the residual graphite on here is it takes a lot of pressure but again it doesn't come on too heavy um, so you don't have to worry if you kind of make a mistake it'll lift pretty easily I like doing texture work because most of it's pretty organic you can and pretty gestural uh, you can kind of just uh, really imply the texture more than anything. You don't have to get it usually spot on. You can just kind of look at the basic shape and what it's doing as far as value uh, goes and just get it close. And most people will start to kind of pick up on what texture that's supposed to be. Just that suggestion is pretty much what you mostly need. And if you happen to like I said, darken an area that shouldn't be that dark. Um, that's what's you know great with working with these two Bs and a uh, two B pencil or higher um, is that it um, it erases pretty easily. So from here, I'm just going to start adding in a little bit of value everywhere else around the backside. Start working my way forward. I'm paying attention to where the brighter highlights are in this crop. I can see that the rim here, this must be raised and it's probably like a bull nose, like routed. So it's rolling forward to, towards us. So the lights in front of, uh, you know, in front of it. Um, so that's picking up the light here. It's picking up the light here and here. I'm going to keep that in mind while I'm applying my value. <laughs> so I don't work that area too much. Um, and I'm just going to kind of dance around it. But I just, you know, working with this tortilla blender, it's not 
it's not going to be eat, not too hard to uh, pull that graphite off of there. So now I have an okay set of, I wouldn't even say mid-tones yet, um, you know, but starting to kind of look like it has a little bit of that uh, form and texture to it. And I haven't really done much yet, right? I just kind of blocked in shape um, and, and a little bit of value. Now from here, I'm probably going to push those darker values again. Uh, You can be, it's going to be a little more forgiving working with those darker values because, again, generally it takes a lot of kind of passes to get them to where they need to be. Um, kind of warms you up uh, for the rest of the drawing. So I would start there. If you've ever really noticed, I guess this uh, what I'm trying to say here. Uh, one of the simplest ways to show volume is a dark line. I'm just going to have to put in the other edge next to next to a lighter line, dark, light, and some other value. That's going to give you the impression that this area is raised right because you have a shadow highlight midtone um, obviously wherever that highlight is where you didn't put the value that's going to imply like i said a, like a highlight so you can have that at a different angle you could have it in a different location but if you surround that brighter area with contrast so darker value or midtones it's automatically going to make it feel like there's volume to that area <clears throat> Just a little pointer. I'm constantly looking back and forth at what I'm, the area I'm drawing, like filling in with graphite, and my reference photo on the computer. I'm making sure I'm not going too dark or I need to carve out that shape a little bit more. I noticed that I pulled this value a little bit too far inward, uh, where it shouldn't be this far down. Uh, so. I just didn't, I'm not going to go back over that area right now. I'll figure that out later. I'll just have to uh, erase a little bit of it. We'll see. I might just pull this line down. Let's see. Again, I went a little too far. I think I need to get these bands in here before I continue to mess things up. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, when I get close to the edge of a sketchbook, I hate working this area because I don't know, it's a weird angle. It's like shooting on the edge of a pool table. Uh, so that's why I like to work on a larger paper and in the center. Uh, but I didn't think that through when I started this. But it might just be a me thing. So I'm having a hard time. I might actually rotate my paper. And I'm going to have a fresh sheet. One second. Sometimes it's best to switch angles because it just allows you to, again, rest your, your hand on the paper. If you're having a hard time being too heavy handed, like I was saying before, sometimes it's nice to, can't really see that. Um, I will extend my pinky like I'm having a fancy cup of tea and I will rest my pinky on the paper 
and then I will just rest my the tip of my pencil like I, I'll pull back on the pencil so instead of drawing from up here I pull back on the pencil extend my pinky and then I can you'll notice that there's my wrist isn't on the on the on the table or the paper anymore and it allows me to work from my my elbow my shoulder um, obviously the further you pull your pencil or choke back on that pencil and the more extend your pinky um, the less control you're going to kind of have earlier on um, so I if you need a little, little more control don't choke pull back too far I'd go about midway um, but again extend that pinky and you might end up with your your a little bit of your wrist touching the paper but your pinky there is a little bit of a reminder to kind of just stop yourself from just resting it onto the paper that's usually my pointer for working lightly other other artists will do this kind of um you can see that where you grab the pencil um like this and you're using your index finger to allow to, you to press you know use different pressure for blending this works better for larger areas getting in here for tighter details and uh, for me it just doesn't work for me try both of those methods out and see what works best for you those are my tips for that <clears throat> so now for me I, my brain isn't that great <laughs> in this regard as far as like if I'm upside down now I can kind of tell what I need to do over here in this corner, but I have to, it takes me a second to process. Okay, well that's reversed. So I just reverse my, re I, you know, rotate my reference. So in, in, in uh, preview, it's command R and it'll rotate it to the orientation that you need. So you're not gonna sit there and continue to um, waste time trying to figure out, you know, uh, if you're working backwards or not. Gonna make these lines a little bit even. I'm gonna carve this out right here. Sometimes you can make that highlight um, a little wider than you need it. Uh, you can always go back in and push value in and make it tighter. Um, it's easier to do that than it is to kind of work backwards. Whenever I'm roughing out the shape and proportion of these darker values, notice I'm not going really heavy early on. Even though a lot of these areas, these little bands here are pretty much pure black, um, rather than just going in and forcibly putting that graphite down on the paper and getting it to those darker levels, I'm again, I'm choosing to gradually build it up that way. Um, you know, if I make a mistake, you know, it's, it's harder to erase. So at least this way I can kind of go back and gauge, okay, is it ready for me to go darker yet? You know, then I can start using that heavier pressure. Right now I'm just putting a, a light line to remind me that this area should be lighter um, than this area. Because again, it's that bull nose, but that means it's rounded. Um, and so it's picking up more, more light. I'll do the same thing over here. 
me just double check what that's supposed to look like. Um, something like a little bit wider and then it tucks in a little bit closer to this other edge. And then I feel like I'm at this point, feel like I'm safe to go back into what I was doing as far as value goes. Some of that I know you can't see, but as I work it, you'll, you'll start to kind of see it come to life and I'll show you later uh, what those little details look like. I see another little spot here that looks like a V in my reference. I'm just gonna block that in. Again, I'm only working with the 2B pencil here. I haven't switched anything out. So just back and forth between the 2B and the Tortillion blender. So notice, remember how I kept saying that in, or at least in week two, you know, there's, you're, you're using organizational line and all of that to um, make corrections to shape and proportion on a global scale, right? And what that means is the entire composition globally, right? Larger. Um, when you get down to the details, textures and whatnot, you're doing the same thing. You're using the same observational skills, uh, but you're working locally. So when I'm I'm observing, I'm just working on this shape here, right? I'm looking at patches of value, looking at their shape, comparing their location to the other larger areas um, of those darker shapes. And that's helping me to make sure that everything's placed properly. Um, and so I'm using those same observational skills, organizational line. I may not be putting it down on paper, but I'm doing it in my head. I'm checking those orientation points. Um, and then again, it's just all about shape and value matching. You know, it's nothing, it's not hard, you know, it's really not. It's all about just simple, work simple, you know, large, and then work in tighter and tighter in those details and get more complicated. Going back in and I'm just cleaning up this line a little bit. And from here, um, I'm just gonna keep darkening things. I'm, I haven't, Got my darker values quite where I want them. Actually, I might just push around some of this graphite just so it's blended, a tight edge or crisp edge. Um, sometimes blending helps you see those values a little bit better. Just make sure you actually have that right shape and the right. When you, you'll notice when you start blending those values, uh, you'll see that the, 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 the graphite, the value will actually lighten a little bit. It won't be as dark. Um, so from there, you're gonna to have to go back in, generally, and push those values again. And you'll notice that some of the edges will, will be a little too soft um, afterwards. So you have to go back in with a sharp pencil and um, tighten those details up again. So that's yeah, a good point, um, Charlene. Yeah, it's always yeah. Sometimes it helps. Our uh, we're working too much with our head down, right? And we get trapped in those little details and the intricacies, and so we start working on them. And then when we step back, things don't, you know, they don't look correct. Um, so it's that's a really good point. Always take the time, you know, at, you know, take a break. Um, even if, you, know, you don't necessarily have to get up and walk away, but remind yourself to stop. Uh, pull back from the illustration and just observe again. Take that moment to take it all in. You know, is this correct? You know, compare it to your reference um, and then make those corrections if needed. You know, thanks for bringing that up. So, right now we're starting to get something that looks pretty similar, right? There's still values aren't perfect yet. Um, there's still some details in there. Got to go back and, and work, uh, but we're getting there. Um, so from here, I would just keep back doing this back and forth process. Um, I noticed in the back here, everything's a little bit more uh, blurry. It's out of focus. So those areas I would just block in. Uh, I can, you know, I won't use a, a sharp pencil to go back in and tighten details because there's really no point because um, it needs to have that blurred look to it.
but it does need to be darker. So I'm just kind of pushing this graphite back around, make sure my middle tones look good. Shouldn't have a highlight. Noticing the highlight in this area right here. It's a little, it's an oval that sandwiches between this V, the opening of the V. So I'm just going to rough that out right now. I'm just gonna darken up the areas around it. So I have that shape, that little highlight. <clears throat> Seeing a few more darker areas that I just kind of need to rough in. Texture wise, I'm just mapping those out really lightly with that residual graphite. Just a little light pressure, getting the basic shape in there. Down in a few areas. Looking at other areas that should be darker. Paying really close attention attention to gradients, um, so those little transitions of light to dark and what direction they're going in. So, for instance, this is a really clean gradient from this bottom corner to this top right. It goes dark, really dark, middle tone, lighter tints. There's a really subtle one happening here. It's actually darker in this top corner, gets a little bit lighter down in this bottom left corner. So I'm just going to try to capture all those little nuances that I'm seeing. And again, work lightly. Um, and if it's probably not going to be the right values when you first lay the graphite down. Um, but you'll start to see it come to life. And you just remember, okay, that, that needs to go a little bit darker, but not too much. Um, you just kind of keep dancing around and pushing value until you gradually building things up until you get that desired look. Thanks, Kaylin. But yeah, this is a fairly new computer, so the battery should should last. Um, this one doesn't drop very quick. Not yet, anyways. When it gets to the red, I usually have about another hour. But yeah, I don't want to, you know, take up too much more of y'all's time. I can keep working this if y'all like. If you feel like you got the gist of what's going on, we can we'll call it. It's up to you. I'm kind of lost in it now, so I'm having some fun with it. Reestablishing my darker values. Still using a 2B pencil. Hand sweating, so I'm just wiping that off. <laughs> I'll notice that's going to happen. For a larger area, if you're actually you know, having to put your hand down on your paper, uh, that you've already put graphite down, that's going to cause big problems. Um, so that's why I broke out that piece of paper a while ago, just to make sure 
Um, I wasn't just picking up the graphite from this illustration and just making a mess of things. Just be mindful of that. See if you can see some of that. Uh, which way I need to go. But we're getting there. It's still a little light, but now that my blacker values are kind of blocked in again, I can start pushing around the middle tones again. Start establishing those, getting those to the darker values that they need to be. This way, if I happen to go over my darker areas, um, it's not going to be that big of a big of a deal. I'm not going to see too much of a change in value in those areas. And again, that residual graphite is going to only help me to kind of, you know, you know a little bit faster, a little more rapid to bring on those values, um, those darker values. And I'm gonna check the comments here, in just a moment. Um, I don't know if I have anything that's finished. Most of my sketchbooks consist of uh, thumbnail studies for for new paintings or whatever I'm working on. Um, I like to put notes, you know, about what's going on in these scenes. I mean, I do um, design work, branding, so you know, I'm fleshing out a billion ideas for logos. Script work for logos, um, other little designs for the possible logo designs. Um, let me see if I got anything in here that is finished or pushed a little farther. Or further. These are again working out some compositional changes to a painting that I started on and actually finished. Um, these are where kind of the process for how some of this started. Uh, so you can see how things actually had it on paper like this, I mean on canvas like this. Um, and I realized that's not, it didn't work compositionally for what I wanted, it didn't feel as dynamic. So I looked at how I want, you know, how to change it. So I started playing around with all the different ways that the snake could interact with the uh, the rest of the <clears throat> elements in the composition. So you'll notice 
And as you work, it's going to be a lot of back and forth. Uh, you're going to have to go back into your sketchbook and plan things out. This is measurements for a custom frame I did for a painting uh, that I built. So again, all this just plan it out. So most of my sketchbook is planning more than it is refining. So let's see. More little doodles for uh, a painting. Client wanted a, a wishbone and a, a little chi-chi, like a little finch. I'm just playing around with different orientations and how that wishbone would be, um, you know, how it would be carrying that wishbone and whatnot. This is fleshing out a little bit further. See that? So framing things out, uh, different options. But I know I have something in here that's a bit more fleshed out. Let me see. This was a study for in class on campus a long time ago. Uh, let's see that. That's fleshing out ideas for a larger mural collaboration. Maybe I don't have anything in here. This is flushed out a little more, but you see my artwork, you know, that this change. Uh, this was actually done with a cold erase pencil. I was talking about that before. Um, I like to work with cold erase pencils just because it, it helps with my, I can gradually build up the value. And then if I ever want to sell this, you know, the sketch later, I'll clean it up and it already feels kind of stylized. <laughs> That's about it. I don't really have a whole lot of finalized stuff in here, which it shouldn't be. You know, your sketchbook shouldn't have finalized works. It's, uh, it's a sketchbook. It's called Sketchbook for a Reason. Turn back to what we just did, if I can find it now. So we can have an ending point. <clears throat> so the bottom one, as you can see, kind of looks like a tire at this point. My camera is not really focusing very well, but in a matter of what, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, we got um, a lot of values kind of blocked in. It's really starting to look like those textures and shapes and proportions, forms, all of that, right? So from here, I just keep pushing it. You know, I'd go back in with sharper pencils, tighten details, keep darkening my, my shadowed areas, keep blending, you know, the areas that need to be blended and so forth. So hopefully that helps. Um, we'll end it there. So we don't, I don't take up too much of your time. Uh, thanks for coming out. I'll stick around for some more questions if you have any. <clears throat> if not, take care and have a good day.